Welcome back to MCP Connects. Today we travel to the Big Apple to talk with Broadway performer, film and TV actor, Gabrielle Reed. Gabrielle tells us how she's been staying active and positive during this time, and she talks about music as breath. Let's go. <laughs> Joining us from her home in New York City, we have Broadway performer, TV and film actor, Gabrielle Reed. Gabrielle, how are you? Hi, I'm wonderful, how are you? Oh, doing really well and really honored Good. and grateful that you made some time for us. Thanks for connecting. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Of course. So how are you? Uh, things are crazy. You have done, you're an incredibly you? busy lady, right? Broadway performance, yeah. TV, film, you have a new yeah. baby. How is life for you, you right know. now? You know what? It's crazy. You know, you just you never think that this is what's going to be happening at any given moment. But that's that's life for you. But um, but things are great. Uh, I like you said, um, I am a, a new mom to a 14 month old. Um, so my husband and I don't really have too many dull moments around here. Um, fortunately, there's always some kind of schedule. There's always something to do constantly at the park and, you know, doing things just to keep him moving and motivated. Yeah. How are you finding this time yeah. right now? I mean, you you know, um, obviously professionally things have slowed down a bit. Has yeah. this been a really good Definitely. time to be home and connect with your family? Yeah. Are you... You know, it's funny. It, it kind of depends on the day. I definitely go back and forth. Sometimes I will sit down and I go, you know what? I have to thank the universe, God, whatever anybody wants to call it, because there is no other time in a performer's life, especially with a child, that both parents would have this long together with your child. Growing with him, learning with him, teaching him, blah, blah, blah. It has honestly been invaluable. Hmm. And, I, and I really do remind myself constantly to actually be thankful for that. Now, on the other hand of it, of course, you know, a lot of our being as performers is performing. Yeah. It, it is a thing that you cannot get in any other place, in any other work style, anything. Being on stage, being in front of a camera, working, acting is, is such a special place. And especially when your heart and your soul is called to do it the way that most artists are, yeah. it, it can be... There's definitely days where it's literally like BD bong and you're just like, what do I do with myself? What do I do? And you're just like, there's absolutely nothing I can do. So, you know, it's, it's kind of weird. You really do go one way and the other. And of course, not being able to see my family is just, you yeah. know, there's only so many Skype calls you can do. And it, there's just there's something about that physical touch. Even yes, though. absolutely. That and then tactile. it's funny, on the other side of it, it's like being a Broadway performer, you don't get time off to see your family anyway. <laughs> so it's just weird on this side to where you literally cannot. <laughs> it's such a strange, you know, sort of back and forth. It's weird, but you, you try to find as many, as many chances to be thankful in all of it. At least, fortunately, all of my family has been safe and healthy and Good. happy and we've been able to navigate through it all as well as we possibly can. So, yeah. Good. That is hard though. Like you say, I mean, if you're, when you're so Very busy hard. performing and you can't see your family, yep. now finally you have time on your hands and you can't see your family. And you can't go. Yep. So, <laughs> it's so, so weird. What have you been doing? I mean, what, what do you do to stay engaged? What do you do yeah. to stay, you know, creative and positive? Yeah. Well, like I said, uh, you know, Dash obviously is a lot of the day. Um, and it was funny, just this week, uh, I've ended up having a lot of random Zoom calls. I actually taught uh, two master classes for two um, kids' performing arts camps mm -hmm. that they figured out a way to kind of make them virtual. It also is either like online classes or so every now and again, I'll get like a self-tape. I had to do one for a commercial actually the other day um, where I was uh, doing making stir fry in my kitchen. <laughs> So that was interesting. Not a place I've ever shot a self tape in my house is in the kitchen. So that was interesting. Um, but um, uh, yeah, so it's just it's just kind of things like that. Uh, doing a lot of reading, a lot of um, uh, I've been working on a voiceover studio also wow. making one in my apartment. So um, working on some different equipment, trying to figure out soundproofing and stuff like that. Little did I ever know as an actor, I'd have to be a sound engineer, a lighting engineer, right. <laughs> all of these different things. So I was like, that's been fun over the last little bit. But um but yeah, yeah, just kind of things like that. Just trying to trying to do as much as I can, but also 
but also kind of enjoying the time off. Well, so. yeah, I mean, I think that's critical, right? That's one of those things that yeah. we seldom allow ourselves and, you know, probably run ourselves too ragged just keeping the hustles going and trying to keep just up with all of the things going. that we've started, you know? So exactly. what is something that you'll take out of this experience these last couple of months as life mm-hmm. returns back to normal that you'll take with you as a, you know, a reminder or as just that thing to appreciate? Yeah, I think a lot of it is that finding that in between time and, and allowing myself to actually breathe it. Like there's a, uh, for those of us that are singers out there, we know a lot of our technique when you breathe is to actually honor the breath, even if it's only a, a quick little whatever. It's honestly finding those moments in my life when this is all back, because I have a feeling that once auditions and everything is going to be back, it's going to be the most intense yeah. time. I, I just feel like everything is going to happen like at one time and you're going to be going to like 10 auditions a day. Um, and I'm just going to, I'm going to have to remind myself literally like when I leave that audition and I get into the elevator to actually honor this elevator ride hmm. and just breathe and just have a moment. Don't think about the next audition. Don't think about what Dash is doing, blah, blah, blah. Just take this 20, 30 second elevator ride and breathe <laughs> and then go on to the next. Yeah. I think that's really important, you know, for all of us. I, yeah. I was talking to a, to a 86 year old man one time and he said, I feel bad for you kids nowadays. I had more time in 15 minutes when I was a kid than you have in a day now, you know, and that's something that yeah. at the time I didn't really understand what he was yeah. saying, but now yeah, recognizing true. that even when we have downtime, we're constantly being interrupted or we're constantly trying to keep up on social or, you know, on Very true. whatever that mm-hmm. is, phones, you know, all of that. Um, so how do you do that? You know, how do you between moments center yourself yeah. and, and find that peace to move on? Yeah. A lot of it is, like you said, is uh, turning off the phone, putting it away for a second. Um, a lot of times it's bath time with my son. <laughs> you know, I'll, uh, the one time I, when I do have my phone, I'll, you know, get a good like bath time playlist and, you know, we just sit and we, and I watch him play in bubbles, you know what I mean? Yeah. And just reminding myself that bubbles are fun, yeah, good, <laughs> you know, good for you yeah. guys. I love that. Um, so you <laughs> obviously, like you say, uh, you're, you're a vocalist, a singer, you've performed, you were in hair and in Carol King's beautiful yeah. story. I mean, you've yeah. had some incredible stage experiences and opportunities can you tell me kind of a, a profound music experience you had that made you realize that this was a part of your soul and your expression? Yeah, um, I think uh, I was kind of just telling the story the other day. Um, a lot of what we do as performers, and I think people don't understand sometimes that the audition itself is like 70% of the job because you're going to audition for way more than you actually book. Mm-hmm. So uh, there was particularly uh, my the beginning of my journey with Hairspray, which is what I ended up making my Broadway debut with. Um, it, I was auditioning for that show over almost a year's time. It was my eighth audition by the time I finally got it. I was going in for the going in for the audition, and I get a callback. I come back to dance, and I get a callback, and I was down to the end every time. It was like me and like four girls left, and then nothing. And I was like, okay, what am I, am I doing something wrong or whatever? And I get down to the end, get down to the end, get down to the end. And finally I was doing a show in, um, uh, I believe it was Atlantic City. And I got a call and they were like, oh, they want to see you again. And I was like, okay, all right, fine. So I go in and I wasn't even thinking of like the address that they were sending me to. I went to the theater, to the Neil Simon Theater where Hairspray was playing. And I sang for the musical director in his office, just me. Uh, and he literally had me do just the end of Welcome to the 60s, the reprise, like where the dynamites are like riffing and crazy. And he was like, okay, thanks. And I was like, oh, what does that mean? I, mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what just happened. What? And, you know, I, I walk out like thinking to see like more girls in the hallway yeah, or something. Yeah. Nobody's there. I leave. And like 20 minutes later, I finally get the call that I got the show. Oh. And it was one of those moments that, solidified I think my entire career even till now that so much of this business is about consistency Mm. and is about knowing who you are so that when you go into those auditions you present that same you that consistent you that polished you so that whenever they're ready and something is ready they can open it up and also come to find out Every time I've gone in, they were like, oh, my God, we love her. We don't have anywhere to put her. Nobody was leaving the show. <laughs> Everyone in, like, my tracks that I was appropriate for, sure, nobody it. was leaving the show. 
So as soon as there was an opening, they were like, that girl, Gabrielle, that girl. <laughs> you know what I mean? And literally they were just like, let me just hear her one more time. Make sure. Yep. Go. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so that has really, really just put a really big ceiling on me as a performer and just knowing what I do, who I am, and just trying to solidify that as best as I can so that when I go into the room, I know that whether I get it or not, I know that I've at least put my stamp on it and they can then say, well, she's not right for this, but ooh, we got this other thing next week. We might bring her in for that, you know, or something. Well, yeah. and I love, I love I, that you built that opportunity probably, who knows, two or three, four auditions before. For all I know, exactly, were, yeah, exactly, so, exactly, yeah, yeah. Beautiful. But it wasn't until that moment where I was like, Oh, it kind of all made sense then. <laughs> Absolutely. So, so then you got the part, you performed on stage on Broadway in front of all of these people, and then you went on to do Carol King and all of those. What's, yeah. What is a profound experience you had in that exchange with the crowd? Well, you know what? You, oh, you know what? Okay. So, uh, you know, we had talked about sometimes about disengaging from social media because it can be kind of nutty, but then every now and again, it like comes to you and it's like, Gotcha. Um, I was flipping through Instagram and I saw this quote that said, why do I love music? Because music is there when everyone and everything is not. And I immediately said, I was like, wow, we think of that, uh, you know, that crush we had, you go to you, that song brings you right back that road trip, you got to have a good playlist, or that song, oh, my God, my grandmother used to sing that song to me all the time, you know, whatever. It's like, unreal. So for instance, like in in Carol King, uh, in Beautiful, there were moments in that show that you would have thought that the writer actually like wrote them in that happened with the audience. So for instance, there was a scene, uh, Carol and Jerry, it's uh, when Jerry writes the lyrics to Will You Still Love Me Tomorrow. Carol sits down at the piano and the first chord, she, it's chord, tonight you're mine. The whole audience would go, oh. I mean, as if it was literally written in the script. It was unreal. Unreal. And then there was another moment. Um, uh, Locomotion was also in it. You know, she, she wrote uh, the music and lyrics for that. And there was, I was a swing in that show. So I was able to watch a lot of times from the back of the house. And there was a woman in the back. Uh, she was in the handicap section. She was in a wheelchair. That song started. And I, sw I was like, at any, mo at any moment, that woman is going to walk. Hmm. you just saw this palpable energy yeah. come out of her when that song came on. Like me and, and my other swing friend, we were like, look, it, it was, it was unreal. And, and again, all of this, most of all of this music is what, 40 years old or, or more. Right. And it was just literally transcending people to another point in their lives. And people would just walk out like, it, it's okay. Like everything is okay. It was yeah. just, it was really incredible to watch every night. It was, it was amazing. Well, there's, there's an amazing thing we've seen happen time after time with melodic, right? Where we're doing, doing this connection where the artists are reaching out to the kids and dedicating songs to them and playing yes. songs for them. And these kids are, yeah. they might be in a hospital for, you know, for weeks in their bed and unable to move because of nausea or, or just what they're going through. And, by the yeah. end of the night, their parents will get a hold of us and let us know, oh my gosh, you know, we've, they've not been able to move all day and now they're dancing with their nurses in the room, you know, and there's this incredible, almost miraculous power that happens, you know, and yeah. that's the beauty of it. So seeing that, experiencing that, being a part of that, can yeah. you wrap up what music means to you in one word? Well, I just did it. Breath. It, it, it just... It just makes you breathe. Hmm. It, it really does. It, it, it will always transcend you to a different place than where you are now. And it does, it just, you feel it. Every person feels it, whether they believe, whether they, what they believe, how they believe, it happens every time, I think. Hmm. Yeah. I think that's yeah. really powerful. You know, we, it reminds yeah. me of, uh, we have a, a little rock star that we have been supporting and his dad said, you know, mm -hmm. some, there's those times where you just have to make it through the next hour, the next minute, the next second, the next breath. And if you can provide, if music can provide that breath, yeah. maybe yeah. that's the one that gets them to the next breath, you know? So that's, exactly. that's very exactly. powerful. Um, do you have a song that you would like to dedicate? Speaking of I do. breath, um, to our rock stars. I do. 
Yeah, it was actually one of the first songs I actually ever learned. Uh, and it was funny that I ended up doing the Carol King, sh- Carol King uh, musical. Um, her songbook was one of the first song- songbooks I ever, ever had. It was like probably 11 or 12 years old. Um, so uh, I would love to do You've Got a Friend. Be amazing. Perfect. Do you have some rock stars you'd like to dedicate it to? Yes, I do. I have some uh, wonderful friends all the way in Egypt, uh, Fatima, and we've got in Kansas, my darling Carly, and Faith in Minnesota, and Jonathan way on the other side of the country from me in Washington. (laughs) Perfect. How about hospitals? Yes, um, we'd love to give some wonderful shout outs to our friends at Seacrest Studios at George Marks Children's Hospital in California, um, Sydney Children's Hospital, Mount Sinai, Beth Israel, right here in Manhattan, Wahoo! and um, University of New Mexico Children's Hospital. Thank you guys so much for doing amazing work. Love it. Thank you. And uh, I'm, I'm holding my breath for this breath right here. <laughs> I love it. When you're down in trouble and you need a helping hand and nothing Oh, nothing is going right. Just close your eyes and think of me. And soon I will be there to brighten up even your darkest night. You just call out my name and you know Wherever I am, I'll come running to see you again. Winter, spring, summer, or fall, all you gotta do is call, and I'll be there. Yes, I will. You got a friend. Well, ain't it good to know that you've got a friend when people can be so cold. They'll hurt you, yes, and desert you. They'll take your soul if you let them. Oh, but don't you let them. You just call out my name. And you know, wherever I am, I'll come running, running, yeah, yeah, to see you again. Winter, spring, summer, or fall, all you gotta do is call, and I'll be there. Yes, I will. You got a friend. You got a friend. Oh, beautiful. Thank you so much for that breath right now in the midst of thank all you. that is happening. Um, thank you. Thank you. Are there any, you. Final, any final thoughts or words you want to leave with the world? You know, I just, I want to give a big, 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 big hug to all of those families out there that are, that are struggling. Um, being a mom myself, uh, I couldn't even... Okay, I couldn't even possibly imagine um, going through what you're going through. And um, from mom to parent, um, I love you. I stand with you. Um, I give you strength. I give you love. I give you courage. I give you breath. So stand strong. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you're a musician and would like to join us in supporting hospitalized kids, email us at rockstar at melodiccaring.org. I'm Levi Ware, and this is the Melodic Caring Project. Thank <laughs> you.